a very good afternoon to you and welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about, not so much talk about, but respond to a, um, a very insightful question from Policula, um, and this pertains almost back to um, my previous vlog on telling the story. Um, he or she asks, can you please talk about what is the process that you go through, albeit maybe subconscious in its nature? And I alluded to that in the previous vlog. Um, much of it is subconscious. Um, that makes you pick and choose what you would be photographing. Perhaps discussing those visual cues that may lend an insight to your processes. <laughs> and it's a brilliant question. It's, um, it is. Um, that said, <clears throat> to answer it somehow feels a little bit navel gazing to some extent. Um, but hey, uh, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to throw up some photographs here that perhaps demonstrate perhaps demonstrate better um, the kind of thing that I do. Now, visual cues, um, I'll say straight off, I don't think I have any. You know, like some some photographers, street photographers, talking about here, use colours. Um, I was watching a vlog the other day, um, a chap from Reykjavik, um, he was saying in the autumn winter months everyone's dressed in black black puffer coats and the like but when he sees a splash or a dollop of color he's immediately his eye is you know alerted um i don't shoot color so that's not a concern for me um just remove that filter that thing immediately um strip it down it's just light and shade no color um, and again I talked about that in the previous vlog so colors no um, some people love hand gestures some people you know immediately you know if somebody yawns or you know there are all sorts of little things that may that may trigger your interest um, and look I've got a body of work um, you know it's a folder and a, literally a, uh, a case um, with actual prints in um, of about 500 photographs uh, five, about 520 last count probably t those 20 those additional 20 are photographs that are floating around maybe maybe not kind of thing but I just leave them in there and they ruminate a little bit and in a year's time maybe maybe they stay maybe they don't um, but having looked through those images I struggle to see a common denominator I struggle to see something that excuse me something that I gravitate towards, uh, you know, colours and, and hand gestures. Or I've got some photographs where hands seem to be prevalent, but that wasn't really what necessarily drew my attention. There's actually one I think I can remember that maybe did, but um, there were other things, there were other components within that image that also were interesting a hand gesture in itself is not sufficient it won't stir me one iota i don't think um, but that's just me um there's you know there's not a right or a wrong way here i mean if 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 cues work for you then hey no problem you know there <laughs> what's the problem there isn't one um everyone's different um again another vlog i was watching the guy was saying that 
you know, he shoots from the hip. He doesn't like that turn, but he doesn't look through the viewfinder uh, when he shoots. And he said he was getting flack for it. Oh, you're not a real photographer if you don't even look through the viewfinder. And, and I thought, you know, who cares? <laughs> if that works for you, then, then do it. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't conceive of doing that. I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, I just, if I see something, I want to tee it up. I want to compose it. I want to see the geometry. I want to see the components and arrange them within a, within that rectangle. Um, so, you know, I think he said that he shoots with a 28 mil lens and a range finder and then the 28 wide lens enables you know because it's a bit slapdash not looking through the viewfinder or relatively slapdash i'm not sure that's the right term but you know what i mean he can then crop because he's got a lot of space to be able to do that with he's got a little system if that works for him then then that's great i i just it just would feel completely alien to me um you know, I've talked about the F3, Nikon F3 having a 100% viewfinder, and I love, I just love that. The MP doesn't, it's a little bit more, and so occasionally you get something creeping into the edge of the frame that you, that wasn't there when you took the photograph. But that's, that's just, you know, that, that's a little compromise that you have to make with a, with an F3. It's exact, it's absolute. So you can, you know, everything in there is your responsibility. And if you get it wrong, it's down to you. Um, so that's just how I am. It's, it, it's just a, every little detail or an insignificant detail can be fantastic or it can, you know, jar a little bit or whatever. But just sort of doing this somewhere and hoping, it, you know, it's throwing caution to the wind and it's like, well, if there's an image there that's really interesting that you feel, you know, that moves you in some way, you know, it just comes up to the eye. Now, now, I kind of thought, why do people do that? Why do people not look through the viewfinder? And I kind of thought, well, maybe it's just a, you know, um, your way of trying to, or one's, one's way of trying to negotiate um, that sort of little fear factor that people talk about photographing strangers on the street that you know I did it when I was 40 years ago I discussed that in a previous vlog you know there was sometimes a kind of thing in front of the lens a little bit and it made me think yeah I was probably trying to hide the camera a little bit and and you're sort of working out little things that well I'm not really happy with that but actually aesthetically sometimes I quite like that because it can be a layer um, you can layer a photograph like that but that's that was not what I was doing back then I was I was trying to find a way of um, of being reasonable of being reasonable to myself in terms of how can I get in there how can I take that photograph without upsetting people without um, being weird or creepy or whatever you know it's a sort of and in the end I just figured out hey just be you um, be open don't hide and that's what works best for me um, you know some people go up and take a photograph in somebody's face a complete stranger and I think there's a funny little thing where people think some people think you know, that's really brave and you've got to get you know you've got to have brownie points for that it's like for me no it's just obnoxious behavior i don't like it and i'll never do it not because i'm not brave but because i just would not sleep well at night doing that it's does the photograph merit the rudeness it doesn't matter how good the photograph is it just isn't a good photograph to me because all i see is the obnoxious behavior that somebody um chose to inflict on somebody else it's just not nice <laughs> it's like, um that's just me i'm not sort of saying that's a rule that everybody else should have because 
at the end of the day, that person was photographing in a, in a country where the laws said that is okay. Yeah, I mean, there are some countries where it's not okay to take public photographs. Um, but in that country, it was okay. So they're not breaking the law. But you've got to have your own laws as well. You, you know, you've got to have your own sense of decency. You know, that's not really a law. That's just a a rule that you place upon yourself, that you that you choose to adopt or not. You know, it's as simple as that. If you're if you're happy being obnoxious, go for it. You know, for me, it's just a completely alien thing, and I can't even. Yeah, I'm not even going to go down that road. But but back to this thing of you know. Uh, <laughs> Picking and choosing what I photograph. I mean, I think in a word, I would answer the question simply by saying life. I'd sort of let life come. And that's my cue. That, that, if I've got a cue, it's life. It's rich. It's vast. It's, um, you know, the human condition. I know that sounds like a pretentious, it is a pretentious thing in, in one sense, but you know, we come into the world and then at some point we leave the world and all those sort of ups and downs, those highs and lows, thrills and spills and everything in between is, is life coming at us. And you know, it doesn't matter whether it's homelessness, somebody kind of bursting out laughing there's a you know there's just an infinite number of of expressions and emotions that happen before our eyes but I think sometimes we're a little bit blasé to it just because there's something a little bit banal about it but if you put a rectangle around it and freeze it it seems to take on uh something amazing uh you know i i don't know that's what i find it and it's it's not just the act of photographing it it's the act of it's almost like a visual diary uh, in a way it's it it's like again previous vlog it was you know it's life comes in culture comes in and then it, the two things run parallel and then it comes back out again in the form of a photograph for me that's how it works for me let me pull some photographs up here um because i think these probably better explain um yes i like layering i mean this first one you know this is just sitting on a bus um people sat on the bus in the foreground and then there are these stick on things in the window a figure and a wicket cricket wicket um and two lads just walking past in between those two figures um and you know, does it mean anything it means whatever you want it to mean or, or not you know it's not a but i you know i took it i like it it works on some level to me not every photograph has to be a depiction of something i mean this one is a little bit more graphic i suppose um but again is there a meaning just somebody bursting out laughing somebody you could say hey look there's a hand there you know she's masking her face is that the cue no she just did that last you know i didn't raise the camera and then that happened uh, and then you know and, and then that did happen she hadn't put the hand up before i put the camera to my eye you see what i mean so you know i just love the interior of this place and i don't know it was a it's a very old photograph um that dated 1992 so yeah you know it's 1990 yeah 1992 um I thought it was older than that, but it's not. Um, 
this next one is um, I mean, this is a very personal photograph. Um, I was struggling with all sorts of things in life. This was a down, you know, an absolute down. Um, thrills and spills, you know, ups and downs. Life happening and, um, you know, nobody needs to know what this is about. But for me, it's a personal photograph that just depicted my emotions and things were you know things were pretty bad back then um it's a sort of metaphor almost for that um it doesn't have to you know it doesn't have to say that to anybody but you don't have to like it dislike it it means something to me though um there's i mean there's a whole number of images here i mean Practically all my images are of people or something living, at least. Um, this one, I just, I sat staring at the, this bowl of wooden fruit and I can't really explain why I was mesmerized by it. Um, it's not something I would normally be remotely interested in. My camera was parked on the table I picked it up and took this shot and you know sometimes I kind of look at images and I'm like a bit dismissive straight away I'm, I'm normally like that to be honest um, but this one I, I wasn't excited by it it wasn't like oh this is a great photograph or anything like that I'm not trying to you know challenge Suzanne or anything <laughs> um, far from it but it just went straight into the body of work boom and by chance with the lettering on the file or whatever it went right at the beginning it went it, it was the start it was the first image in in the in the in the folder and um i'm not sure if i'd real have realized it at the, uh, had that not happened it was just a bit of luck really but for me you know i don't do stories per se my whole body of work is a story of life of of my life of other people's life but <coughs> life happening it can be a seen as a as a photographic diary in a sense it's a pretty extensive one um but this one just sat perfectly at the, the beginning and i realized not not at the time some months later that it's again it's a sort of metaphor for to me anyway for for Adam and Eve um, with Forbidden Fruit or a more Darwinian kind of thing you know the Big Bang so it the beginnings of life and therefore that seemed just to be the right the opening of life the, 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 the beginnings of life uh, the beginnings of a folio the beginnings of a body of work and that's what that's about um, I pull that out it's not a typical photograph of mine but it just works and does what exactly I wanted it to do um, you know beginning middle and end if you're going to do a story uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a day in the life of the fisherman you know leaving port it has a, a sequence to it and for me it's about being born the beginnings of life whether that be your life or mankind it's the beginnings the and 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 then the end so a metaphor for that and then all the other all the other images are about play laughter despair isolation homelessness all that stuff that's the rich tapestry that's life happening um and that's kind of that's how I that's how I operate again not in a conscious way just do it when I feel like doing it and I do it this one is this is actually leaving where I was brought up um, there's a tunnel and this is about leaving that city and going to live in another city um, you're not going to get that from that but but i know it's that you know 
um, I've got to satisfy myself first and then if somebody else likes it great if not hey that's how it is um, so although that's not a sort of typical photograph of people and what have you it is people it's cars it's it's commuting it's you know what a lot of people do it's part of that life experience I guess this one it's just you know I sometimes like things that are a little bit surreal I guess and you look at this and think it's not surreal you know it's a cow in a river but for me it's just it just I saw it and you know, it's one photograph but um, a white cow yeah I'm sure there are white cows but do they do they go in rivers I mean and I thought they just ate grass and this one's eating leaves from a tree like a giraffe it was just odd it was just it was just peculiar you know it was just I've not seen anything like that before so yeah I mean there is I do like surreal um, this next one is a maybe a good example um, I can remember the pro I can remember the process of every photograph like it was yesterday um, no visual cues though I don't think not that I've you know letters on a postcard you know if you, if you see correlations let me know you know uh, I, I I can't see them if you know I, I, the process was you know I, I mentioned I love photographing in new places you know familiarity breeds complacency for me I love new lots of people don't they like safety they like uh, familiarity and that's good as well that's no you know that's brilliant it's not right or wrong you know it's just what I how I operate not consciously that's just what I do it's what feels right to me um, let life come and I'm just literally in this new place it, a place called Whitby in England um, northeast I think yeah um, been there once haven't been back since um, I'm literally walking along parallel to the sea to, um, to the coast to the to the shore footpath and I'm sort of noticing a silver rail it's not the prettiest silver rail in the whole world but it's silver and it's just catching my eye as it might anybody um, but in the background you see the footprints now, I'm always a bit nervous of footprints because it can look a bit cliche but this isn't you know smooth sand and one set of footprints or two sets of footprints it's um, yeah it's it's kind of almost texture um, which I love so now I'm kind of, I've, I've, I think it's at this stage, I'm shooting with a 50, 50 mil, um, and I'm just mindful that if anything happens, I need to be at F16 to get the focus on the rail and, and the sand in the, in the, in the, in the background. Um, just otherwise it's all gonna, yeah, it's not really gonna work that's just a little decision I've made f16 and then all of a sudden I come to this trickle of water that's coming out um, that's at angles to the rail and again it's another layer of texture of, of um, just that sort of lovely swirling movement of water um, my you know I know my exposure my shutter speed is going to be fine I'm exposing for the highlights um, it'll it'll be fine and then all of a sudden I lift my camera up and the dog suddenly comes into frame now to some people that might be you know that might ruin the photograph to me it made the photograph that's why I pressed the shutter because of the dog I got all this going on and then boom a focal point almost a, a, yeah, you know, it was a split second because the dog was chasing a ball or something. Boom! I think it was at a fiftieth of a second or something like that. You can see the dog's tail wagging. You know, there's movement in the in the tail there. 
Um, slow shutter speed because I'm at f16. That's cool. I can, you know, range finders are very good at low at, 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 um, at slow shutters, um, you know, slow speeds. Um, and, you know, I immediately knew that that was a, a keeper. I mean, you know, I've not budged from that. You might dislike it intensely, whatever it might not mean. You know, it, certain things just happen and they either resonate with you or they don't. Um, this one absolutely does. Um, yeah, it's, um, that's just, that's how it happened. But cues, no, it's, it's a, it's a number of things that coming in, um, happening and then, oh, uh, right, boom. And it just is, you know, that, there's nothing more to say about it. That's, um, I don't know. That's how I work. Um, this was just sitting outside having a coffee um, and it started raining. Good old England. Um, maybe you could say the water beads are a cue. Maybe. I do like that. I, you know, I absolutely do love that texture thing. Um, but it was, this is just a very idle kind of throwaway photograph. I wasn't thinking anything really other than capturing this image everything seemed to work in it sometimes it doesn't you lift the camera but you get a, a little bit of a um you get a little funny feeling sometimes that ah you know that's that's kind of nice or i don't know i don't over complicate it when it comes to taking the photograph really um this next one back to people thankfully um yeah i can't not take that don't know what it means. Don't care. Um, you know, there's no explanation required. Just, but once I've processed it, once I've put it into Lightroom or Photoshop, you know, I get that thing of the girl exhilarated, you know, by being up high, and another girl having the exact opposite feeling of terror. You know. <laughs> And that's that's kind of a metaphor for life sometimes isn't it what's exciting to one person is is horrifying to somebody else um we're all different aren't we there's no right or wrong but i just visually i love this image um i you know when i saw it camera went up boom thank you very much that's got to happen this one there's about i think it took about 10 photographs 15 photographs maybe it was a Sunday afternoon, local park. Just some lads playing, playing basketball. Um, each photograph is different. I took some wides. I took some. wasn't really sure what I wanted, but if somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said that is because, you know, when I saw. Um, Oh, what's it called? It's a Jack Nicholson film. Uh, Ball in the Basket. Um, oh. Not The Shining, obviously, but um, I can't remember what it's called now. I'm useless with names. Um, but that re that film resonated hugely with me. And there's no, you know, I've never played basketball. It's not a sport that I've particularly gravitate towards um i'm a sort of rugby person this is i'm you know i discarded all the other ones the other ones they're perfectly fine they're perfectly well exposed all the rest of it but it just they just meant nothing to me but this one bang i'm absolutely you know i've got to have that that's that's staying you know and i, I think it's something toward about that about that film um you know i can't be sure but i think it is i think it would pertain back to that um again let me know what the film's called <laughs> just gonna forget it for a second otherwise it'll just annoy me um you know i it's just i don't know something about I, you know this is a metaphor for marriage in a way um you know just looks I, I don't know 
bloke with a hat over his eyes. I, there's something comical about it, but it's also maybe, yeah, you've been with somebody for a long time, maybe that's what happens or not, you know. I mean, I love to believe that it doesn't. Um, this next one is at Saint, taken at St Pancras, and I, I'm i always sort of looking, I guess. I just always, you know, that's how I operate. I'm always, I'm not staring, but I do love people watching, you know. Um, and I think this just harks back to isolation again. Um, a single figure. There are, I think there are a number of these. This one also, at, uh, I think it's Stansted Airport, um, just came out, young dude, but he's not looking so 2D because well, not so cool, because he's forgotten to, he's just bought the New York hat cap, and he's got a, um, he's forgotten to take, the, to take the plastic toggle off it, which I just thought was, <laughs> I don't know. I like little details. I love little details sometimes. You know, the going back to the the ball in the basket, the light hitting his forearm. Um that, yeah, I don't know. Things have to be a certain have have something. Um this one is I you know, I've this hearts back to being a teenager to nightclub days. I didn't go to nightclubs that much really but um, I did go to some um, for probably about a year before I vowed never to go to another one um, I had a thing where girls used to dance around their handbag you know in stiletto shoes um, they put the handbag on the floor and dance I just always I don't know uh, yeah to this day I don't really know what that's about I just thought it was a little bit but you'd often see people with new shoes and they'd forgotten to take the labels off the sole and that's exactly what this photograph is yeah it's at a wedding but um and she just turned around and saw me and <laughs> burst out laughing and i love that kind of that layer yeah, that unfiltered laughter thing uh if you just cap catch it right um you know, you don't necessarily know the guy's taking a label off. I do, but does anybody else? I, I don't know. Um, but there's something else with the with the the young bridesmaid, and um, yeah, I don't know. There's a very sort of formal occasion, I guess, with a with a, a big big laugh. I, yeah, I, I love that kind of thing. Um, I don't know why but hey that's this is the process it's not you know I can't say oh the label on this the soul is the cue I mean maybe I can yeah maybe that is the cue but I'm not going out looking mindful that oh somebody might have a label on the bottom of their shoe ever I, you know when I go out my brain is blank it's just an absolute I'm just um, I'm just enjoying what may come or not you know sometimes it just does not it's either me I'm not receptive enough or I'm not in that place or just nothing that seems to happen or or I see things that I photographed a hundred times before well do I take another photograph of that you know I don't know um, sometimes yeah, there's no reason on earth why I'd like this photograph, but it's one of my favourites. I, I don't know why. I'm, you know, I'm not a dog photographer. I'm not into Elliot Erwitt, especially. You know, I, I like some of his stuff, but I'm not, it's not like a, I'm not into, you know, I like dogs, but it's this is not my dog. I don't know whose dog it is. We're on the top of um, Mantour in England, in the, I think the Derbyshire Peaks. Um, and I've got no, I, I really have no idea why I took this, but I did. And sometimes I like things that are a little bit offbeat or a little bit surreal or a little bit, you know, that 
just kind of a mystery. I like a sort of, I often um, lean towards something that's, that doesn't really say. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not fond of things that shout messages at you. You can, yeah, go into it. You can wonder, you can, uh, you know, but I'm not, I don't like statements. I don't like absolute statements. It's not a, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, it's, you just take some images sometimes that I, I have no idea really what, why or what or, but it doesn't mean I don't, I don't like it. Um, it doesn't have to depict something. Um, equally, you know, this is in Whitby again. Um, this is taken on the same afternoon. Just sometimes desperate people. I think it comes from a, being in a large family. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of bedlam that goes on. That ah, oh, you know, exasperating stuff. Um, and I think it comes from there. It's when you see groups, you know, I know these guys knew each other. Um, because 30 seconds before they've been talk talking and now all of a sudden they're kind of looking completely different uh, in completely different things at uh, different angles and they're looking almost as though they're not together but they are because you can see even though they're apart they are sufficiently in their you know in people's in their space uh, personal space so you know that they are together and yet you know, they're completely different ages. It just looks a bit odd in some way. I don't know. Disparate, whatever. Um, same here. You know. <laughs> um, there's no thought process here. It's just... It's just trying to make some sort of visual sense of um, putting a box, you know, a frame around something that looks interesting in a split second because it's Oxford Street and it's, you know, there's traffic coming at you from every single direction and to be able to make any kind of sense of it is nigh on impossible. Um, but yeah, I got this, and you know, I, I I I do love it. I was a bit unsure about it to begin with, but I do I do I like it now because it's just a bit, it's a little bit crazy, like life sometimes, you know. Um, yeah. Um, occasionally, occasionally, I might get a little snippet of information, and this is one example of just hearing the night before, happening to hear the the forecast that it was going to be foggy. And I was out at five or six o'clock that morning. Um, again, it's a, a bit of mystery, perhaps, um, a bit of intrigue. Um, I, I like, I love, I've always loved atmosphere, whether it be light or fog or um, shadows, light, you know, a mood. Always, you know, something that evokes a feeling. Um, sometimes it's just by what is happening. Um, this is kind of almost like The Shining, the film The Shining. I don't, I'm not going out thinking, how can I best enact a scene from The Shining or anything? No, it's just stuff happens in life that resonates. I mean, to be honest, it was the filming of it that took me when I first saw that film. It's like, how is that camera going along the back of the bike as he's cycling round and it's so smooth? And of course, it was steady cam, but that was a very, very new thing. I just hadn't seen a shot like that. I didn't even understand why it, why it was so beguiling when I first saw it, and then I and then I realised, oh, you know, that's. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just a very powerful film. Um, this is, I mean, P 
people she asked me what film I use. It's normally HP5, but this is one example when I used FP4. This is going back to 1989. Um, still experimenting, still trying to work stuff out. Um, distance and ISO and what you can get at certain distances with a certain lens. Um, I, yeah, I think I would have shot this with HP5 had I had a keener sense of what was what. But it works. You know, I was... I, I, I know at the time, even though I wanted this... I didn't want this composition. When I saw it, I wanted it. Um, but I knew that I got a very shallow depth of field and it was going to be a bit precarious. Um, and the next one is just me... Uh, yeah, kind of boxing a little smarter or giving myself a bit more leeway. I just come back a little bit. Um, but it's, you know, at that time, I think it was all about all about composition. Um, well, not all about, but <clears throat> my eye was very much about um, shape within a viewfinder. Yeah, geometry, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one, I think, is... When was that? That's um, 1988. Um, same thing, really. Shape and light. And just using one camera, one lens, 50mm. <coughs> and just working out whether that combination works for me whether that suits me whether I can visually attain what I need with with a 50 mil and I did branch off a little a bit once or twice with a 35 I definitely did um, and I quite like 35 but I always go back to 50 I mean I've always used 50 now always I have done for quite a while um, once in a blue moon I'll put a 35 on but it has to be for a particular reason um, 50 just suits me it just does no point in fighting it if it works for you and I think I'd worked out in the early days quite early on that 50 was right for me um, and I know people say well why don't you you know just use have four lenses and uh, for me it's a, it, I don't know it's I know the subject matter I like and I don't need you know there's two percent there's two times in a hundred one time in a hundred where I think oh, maybe a longer lens or a wider lens might have been better but the vast majority of the time 50 is just right for me it's just suits what I do um you know if I if I struck if I was struggling with one lens I would I'd buy another lens I, I don't struggle with it it just works it just is you know it's just beautiful, you know, when, when something works, uh, if it doesn't cause a problem, then why, then why, um, then why change? Um, you know, I sometimes think, oh, am I being a little kind of a bit old in the tooth or something, you know, can't teach an old dog, but it's not a trick, is it? If, if you're getting what aesthetically works for you and technically works for you, then that's a combo that works. You know, to my eye, I'm not saying it's the right combo. I'm saying it's right for me. It might be useless to you because that's not how you, you know, your subject matter or what you want to photograph is not, you know, it's completely different to mine or you, you know, it's just a personal thing. No right or wrong. Um, you know, marrying somebody. I don't know. I love this composition. It's... I just like the head dipping down at the bottom, the shoulder blade, and then the little girl kind of reaching and looking under. I like the cleavage top right, and then the hand coming in at the right. And it was just funny because I just, I've always thought, you know, these look like meringues or something. And it's kind of like that fairy tale of, you know, prince and princess. And it's just. It's bizarre, and yet 
you know, when you see two people get married, I always <laughs> end up having a tear in my eye kind of thing. As bizarre as it all seems, it, it, there is something lovely about it as well. Um, but for life of me, I still haven't worked out how. She actually said, I think a couple of seconds after taking this photograph, she, she said she needed the loo, and I was thinking, how on earth do you... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> One of those th things that happen in life that you'll never really understand, but happen nonetheless. Um, this next one is, um, you know, culture. I've talked about that, and I was a massive fan of um, all things that were left bank in Paris at the time. All the artists and sculptors and authors seem to gravitate towards Paris and I always thought there was something incredibly glamorous about that um, back in the kind of 60s, 70s kind of time um, and there were these little cafes that existed where they all used to gravitate towards um, you know the Jean-Paul Sartre's and the de Beauvoir's and um, yeah I mean the whole host of them, um, Giacomelli sculptor um, uh, yeah, a whole raft of people and they always, you know, I was left bank Montparnasse in Paris just always sort of had this mystique to it this, you know, what was it about it I just wanted to go and see it and I would love to have been part of it, really um and just growing up, I, you know, I read all sorts of stuff by these people um, because of a girlfriend, actually. She used to give me books and I had a couple of years of just reading intensely and amazing books. And I think she just seemed to know what I would like. And um, yeah, and then I realized uh, I could spend my life doing this. I felt she got to get out and do, you know, make some of my own stories and stuff. So but in that time, that one window of um, really intense reading, this kind of this stuff just was so uh, huge. It was just massive to me. So come 2011, this was taken. Um, I was there with family and I kind of thought, well, I'll just take a photograph of this cafe, um, Cafe de la Rotonde, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, it's one of the places, it was, it was one of the um, drinking wells or cafe that these people went to. It's very famous for it. Photographs up inside with all, all these amazing people. Um, and I thought a snapshot postcard type image would be perfectly sufficient and then I thought uh, I really want something else actually um, but my hands are tied a little bit I was with my then wife and daughter and so I you know what can you do sort of thing but then I noticed this rather eccentric waiter um, pacing up and down and doing peculiar things and what have you. I'm not sure what it was about, to be honest. I think something was lost in translation a little bit. But I thought, ah, if I can somehow... Anyway, I saw him coming, and I, I had the camera in the hand, and I just let one off, literally. Just yeah, shooting from the hip, <laughs> I guess, I think. Did I? I, I can't actually can't remember. It looks a bit like that, doesn't it? I assume that's what I did. Um, and I got this, and this is my again. It's a sort of metaphor for all that stuff, all that wonderful culture that came in. Um, and you know, you can't tell it's the Cafe de la Rotonde, um, especially unless you're perhaps a native or something. Um, you recognise the buildings across the road. I, I you know, I, it doesn't matter. For me, it it's a photograph that depicts those times and my 
feelings about it and yeah um and i i love that i i really love this photograph for that reason just a nostalgic thing sometimes we're still in paris here sometimes i rank with kind of i don't know um with things that are just a little bit you know the male gaze um female gaze as well <laughs> she's having a bit of an eyeful as well isn't she um the woman in the background but yeah it's, it's kind of one of those peculiar things i know it's an instinctive thing to a large extent but it's also quite harassing and um intimidating i guess to some people you know and for good reason so I'm, well, i've always been sort of mindful not you know to try not to do that even though i'm a bloke and you know but don't sort of stand and stare or something like that but you know she was actually in fairness sort of strutting about the place a little bit um you can't really see that from the photograph but there was something about what she was doing i don't know it was peculiar and she was almost trying to gain attention for something in in, in some in some way and i don't know for what or why but she wasn't just a normal person she was doing something i can't remember what but you just get this photograph of four people just staring at her backside and it's, it's always been something i've been a bit uneasy about but also well it's birds and bees to an extent isn't it i've never quite worked out you know i think if it's just a glance it's fine it's just when you stare isn't it but yeah this is a photograph of that um and i sometimes like photographs of you know something as cliche as the eiffel tower if you can f sort of photograph it and it's actually very sec a very secondary thing i love things like that where it's not you know anyway um i mean look there are a million photographs here i can go through so uh, i mean i don't yeah i've got a this this is getting on a little bit um this one is just a again this is paris in the metro um lines on his four arms and on the door on his forehead and it's that sort of fatigue he's fatigued um the fatigue on the door the lines the scratches the and then the the eyes you know shut eye and then the woman next door to him is blinking i presume yeah i think it's a blink but they've both got their eyes shut um yeah i don't know uh, some images you just cannot not take and this is another part of the human condition this sort of work and exhaustion and you know he looks like he's gonna miss his stop doesn't he um so i'm just drawn to the just drawn to stuff like this i don't know um holland you know light coming from behind the guy on the left here just leaning against that post i don't know what the dynamic is here it's a peculiar dynamic um smoking which was a little bit of a cliche wasn't it but you know i don't know what he's smoking um but yeah i sometimes just like this kind of stuff um equally i think in the same 10 minutes or whatever you or you know certainly afternoon or time of day um you know they just look a little bohemian they look there's just something a bit mis mystical about that I, I don't know i i honestly my favorite photographs are the ones i just don't really understand or don't want to understand perhaps but no cues really just maybe light you know i i photograph with light straight into the lens i photograph it with you know when it's on the back of my neck i'm it's just getting it right whatever you do just expose it properly and it, it can be fantastic but i i do love you know light's a very strong thing um but it doesn't mean that you can't get interesting stuff 
Um, this is, I think, outside the museum, um, and yeah, uh, this is Bordeaux. Just another, I, I don't know, another isolation shot, I guess, um, with the sort of texture on the floor and. It's just weird. I applied a little bit of contrast to this, but only a small amount, and it went like this. It's almost like a lith photograph, you know. But yeah, um, this family dynamics again. It's uh, yeah, arms up because the sun's in his eyes. Arms up because. I don't know, he's just looking down at the sun I'm talking about, and then the chink of light on the daughter's um, hip, back of chairs, um, yeah, I don't know, um, Copenhagen, clown coming out of a toilet, just, I saw him go in, so obviously I knew he was going to come out, and that was, I don't know, <laughs> Um, I like I like the unusual sometimes I like layering I really do um, this is Copenhagen again um, two strangers leaning against the door and then the guy with a bike um, this was this was Oslo and I just saw the dreadlocks and, and the plant and the fact that he's just looking very cool and I like yeah I like you know the dreadlocks sort of mirror the the plant in a way I, you know why do I take a photograph how do I take photographs I yeah I honestly don't know it's stuff that just presents itself um, the girl in 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 um, Uh, Salzburg just the enigmatic smile Mona Lisa smile I guess um, but also a throw it back to the Edward Manet bar at the Folie Bergère. Um but that wasn't my cue you know I just realised that afterwards uh, <clears throat> but a smile you know a, a non-verbal is very very powerful to me a non-verbal that's huge in my book but it also has to have something you know it has to have light it has to, you know something else always um, love Oslo just big fan of love <laughs> bit soppy I know but hey that's just me that's leg draped over somebody else's um, yeah this is Morocco and very early photograph one of my earliest 1987 um, you know all the buildings tail off and then you've got the women Putting their sheets out on the roof tops. Um, this is just composition, composition, light, shade. Um, Western looking guy in jeans and then a traditional looking Moroccan in traditional dress, I mean. With a lad just coming into frame that I got lucky with. Um, I, I, yeah, even though this is an old photograph, I remember it like it was yesterday. You know exactly how it happened, where I was walking along, and what you know. I just sense that movement at the corner of my eye, and yeah, um, just got lucky with if it had been a split second before or later, it wouldn't have worked. But. Um, you, you get that sometimes you get that look it's um it's yeah this one is Spain again 
light. I love low light. A lot of people will shy away from that. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, low light shadows and, and light and again mood and atmosphere. Um, girl just parked there. Um, yeah. Can something I don't know. Yeah. I, the spills of light coming from below. I don't know, you know, I, what is it from a film or I, I have no idea. But again, I cannot not take this photograph. Just everything is right in it for me. It just it presents itself as though it's, you know, but you've got to do a lot of walking and a lot of not seeing stuff like this to get that bit of luck where it something does happen and you know had I been there five minutes later she might have moved and you know I don't know it's bizarre isn't it how things happen sometimes um this is just a bike and I no reason on earth why I like this but I saw it and I, I love the texture of the wall behind it even though it's out of focus um deliberately so um, but it's there and it's a, a real part of the the photograph in my opinion I just like being able to bring things in in such a way you know shapes one of those things you had as kids you could bend and make into different it's a bit like that it's just finding a, a pleasing way of maybe putting an awkward shape into a rectangle that's a big part of what I love a uh, massive part um, it doesn't matter. sometimes it doesn't matter what it is a bike uh, I think yeah I can talk about I think bikes are maybe a cue bikes definitely occur in my photographs I'm not a big cyclist I'm not um, I've got a bike I ride a bike but I'm not a big cyclist at all but it's what they represent at you know at a time in my life they you know they do come in probably that's a um, one thing that I would say if they is it, you know I don't go out actively looking for bikes or anything but they do seem to creep into my photographs quite a bit um, and I think I know why but yeah, that's another story um, again mystery this is just in Sweden um, yeah I think that's something about death in Venice or something perhaps um, I don't know it's just an intrigue and a mystery I love I love all that um, this one is another family dynamic one in Sweden also um, just the way she was kind of straightening her body and then her, her siblings and I just love that kind of I don't know um, yeah mum's there she knows I love things like this where you know patterns mimic the, the um patterns of light behind him you, you know and again love or or whatever it might be I don't you know who am I to say but it's um you get characters sometimes or you get a certain look um Sweden was full of people who kept on seeing me before I could photograph them they kept on you know it's the only country that that's happened in I've mentioned it before but really bizarre they were you know and they didn't mind you photographing them but inevitably it turned into a bit of a portrait rather than a yeah you just got to go with what is um, but occasionally I managed to get a few shots where I mean even though he's looking at me it's a 
bit of a candid photograph in a sense because but I love that that sort of that, you know right from the word go really we're trying to be autonomous aren't we we're trying to find our own way we're trying to find our own path and even as a kid you you know you you don't want to be told what to do all the time and you know I don't know that's kind of what that is um there's there's all sorts really I can't say there's one thing or another it's just as I say it's just life coming at you um why do I like that no idea no idea at all no idea this one this one's back in yeah Copenhagen again um you know the motifs on his sleeve mimicking the the little mermaid statue a little detail you may or may not notice but that's it's there there's there's there are many um you know i could go on and on and on but you get the idea there's this is just a fraction of you know many many more um but yeah it's it's just let, letting life come to you and 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 being receptive to it just and 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 being fascinated i guess by people but not expecting anything don't go out with said you know well i'm not saying don't i'm saying i don't go out with you know expectations or a or a a list of things that might pull me in i just go with what moves me just i, just, I don't think about it i think about it later afterwards but at the time it's just a blank canvas one camera one lens blank canvas and just going with what you're interested in what alerts you what takes your um imagination something along those lines particular things i i don't think there's one you know that, that, I, I don't think there's a particular cue per se but anyway yeah hopefully that was interesting of some description you know i'm not sure if it was but um yeah your processes your what pulls you in um no said thing just go with the flow i think is my is is, is what i do um Sounds a bit lacklustre, really. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing a trick. Maybe I should have, you know, cues, write them down and think. But eh, it's not me. I can't think of a single cue that I would use or that would be interesting to me. You know, is somebody yawning that interesting? Maybe it is to some people. To me, it's just somebody's yawning. Big deal. There are other things, you know. You, I'm, you've got to let life in. You've got to be. You've got to love life a little bit. You've got to sort of, not even love life. You just got to be receptive to it and be fascinated by it, by being intrigued by it, which I am. I'm totally, you know, I'm bewildered by it, and I don't get stuff sometimes. And I just, you know, and it's almost like I'm, I'm processing life, in a way, or trying to understand life. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah that's that's all i can say really um so yeah it's been long enough and um thank you very much for stopping by and yeah see you for the next one cheers